Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Glenn's Tech World here and today we're going to be working on a star topology. Now, the different type of topologies are the network setups in which computers are, well, they are set up in networks like um, land networks, wind networks, and buildings. You can imagine like a topology like a blueprint. This is how I want my computers set up. This is where the switch is. This is where the router is. This is how much feet of cable I am. Does this have room to upgrade? Does this have room to add on other devices and such like that? What am I going to be using this for? Do I need this much capability? A lot of these questions are actually, well, they come up when you're going to set up a network. All right, so right now, as you see, I am in the router right now. And I'm going to go over to the etherface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 0. Now, in going over to this ether um, interface, I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to make sure. Oh, yes, this was a 0. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to put this in here. Now we're in here. I'm going to assign the IP address of 192.168.1.1 in here just because this is going to be the side that uses the dot one dot one. I mean the one dot one, um, excuse me, IP address end of it the, after the octate. Now, you know, it's still going to be using the same subnet mask. I know earlier on I said there's going to be probably using a different one, but we're going to be using the same subnet mask of 255.255.255.255. But the third octet counting from the left, which you already count IP addresses from the left, 192.168.1.1. The third one is going to be changed. So that's why it won't be communicating. But you can see the DNS server is still the same. I can put the DNS server as Google's default 8.8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8 .8, or I could just do the two eights and the two fours. Either way, they will still work now i actually do it support as well as um, ethical hacking so that's why i tell you that these um certain configurations work because i do it on the job all the time so now we're going to get over here to the 192.168.2 now okay yeah, i'm setting everything up right here now the thing about these topologies once you really get the feel of how to set up a network it's pretty much just mapping it out, making sure all the IP addresses are correct. Because at the end of the day, once you do this so many times, you're really just going to catch it. The reason why I'm able to do these videos, and you see I'm doing it fast, is because I went to school for this. Now, two years ago, I started out, I wanted to do coding. Doing coding, I got into hacking. Loved hacking, loved coding. Then I got into um, IT more like um you know computer maintenance troubleshooting love that now i know the hall and everything i love it and, you know that's what i'm going for you know as a data scientist don't get me wrong hacking is the greatest part of what i do i honestly love being able to break into different um, applications i love just the power of it you know i walk around every day with, as an ethical hacker i i just love it so that's why you know if you're going to do this, people, you really have to have a real love for this. And this may sound cliche, but you got to. If you don't have a real love for doing this, it's going to get, you're not going to like it. Going to be honest. IT, you deal with a lot of problems, um, especially you're doing with networking. You're like, wait a minute, what could this possibly be? Now, there's always a logical answer, but then you have to find it. But see, I love it because I love building creating attacking and breaking i love that i just love how the data is every time i learn a new hacking technique i get giddy like it's the greatest thing in the world so once again if you're going to get into it you gotta love it now of course there's certain levels i've always shot for the top when i was with machinima um, i was one of the directors that had one of um one of the longest running series the uh, mythbusters when I was with Freedom in a Subnetwork program, I have my own subnetwork. was the only machine director that ever had one. These are the levels, so I always shoot for the top. To me, it's either go big or go home. Uh, really, it's either all the power or die. That's just, it, it is what it is at that point. Now, as you see, I'm also securing everything with this router. You have to make sure you secure these things. Just because you set this up does not mean no one's going to hack it. 
every time you set up anything, always assume somebody's going to hack it. How my computer is set up now, automatically assume somebody's going to hack it. It's not set up the same way as a regular computer would. There's my passwords. I always think that someone's going to try to hack it. That's why my passwords are insane. Like my passwords are like mega long for that specific reason though. Now I did get a couple of questions about really why I made the website, why I made the whole channel, even though I technically stopped doing YouTube, is more along the lines of this is my online portfolio. So if somebody wants to come and hire me, they're looking right here that I can build a LAN network and a WAN network. I know how to set this up. They're looking at this. And I know I do it on a static IP as well. So this is why I make it. It's because it's an online portfolio. I make hacking tools. I do. I show certain hacking tips. I show um, hacking news to show I stay up to date. This is an online portfolio. When you, you know, once you really want to get big time, you have to make portfolios. A resume is cool, of course, but th but um, if I walk into a building, it's, hey, I don't have a resume, but I have a whole website. And on this website, it details what I can do. It details the hacking techniques that um, I know about. It details that I keep up there with the news. And you're seeing that I know how to set up networks. I know how to get into a switch. I know how to configure it. And I know how to secure it as well. Securing is the biggest aspect in IT. I cannot stress this enough. Security in the least invasive way. Now that that's all set up, we're going to actually start to um, ping this. I'm going to show you guys that, well, guys and girls, I'm not discriminating. Honestly, um, girls are a little bit better at multitasking that I've seen than most guys. Like, um, I'm great at multitasking, and I've seen girls really have done phenomenal with multitasking. But anyway, so now you're seeing I'm pinging this. It's not working because the destination host unreachable. Now, even if I connect these two routers, it still will not do it because once again, this is just a basic configuration. There are a ton more steps on this. But either way though, you, I'm gonna show you right here. I'm even gonna get go back into the router and I'm gonna activate the interface. Now, there's nothing set up on this interface, keep in mind, so that's why it's not gonna work. I'm just doing the basic ones. In the future videos, I'll actually show you all how to have two different um, Octic IP addresses actually communicate with each other. Now you have the 192.168, the 172. whatever, the 10. whatever, the 169.254. That is a IP address. That means that your system is down. You never want to get that IP address. For one. I don't believe any ISP would actually assign that to you for a static IP. And if they did, it's stupid because for one, once your connection goes down, we don't even know the extent of how bad it's going down. Your, um, your antenna could go down. That means that your private network is up, but your public one is down. But we can tell that because it's going to have a 192 IP address with a 169 static IP configuration, which once again, I don't believe anybody on the planet does because it's stupid. It's the IPO one. The IPO one basically, your computer can be fresh out the box, not connected to anything, and that's the IP address that it assigns. This is an auto IP address. Now, as you see right here, when I'm pinging this on my, when I'm pinging the um, octets on the specific octet that's associated with as you can see now i'm getting pings i'm pinging the switch i can ping the router do you know i can ping everything but if it's on the different one i can't do it this is what's called an isolated setup now some companies actually prefer this mainly because let's say if the left side is built let's say if the uh, left side is billing and the right side is I don't know servers if the servers get hacked you don't want that to go over the billing if billing gets hacked you don't want to go over to the servers that's why isolation is really important you just want in that you, when you're creating a network you want to consider this because you want to say why does billing need to contact with the servers why 
Are they going to be sending any data through? Are they going to be accessing any resource in the private network? If the answer is no, they don't really need to be communicating. Now, once again, once being in IT, of course, you know, you set things up what people want. But also, now you see how when I secured everything, now I have to log in to this. I can't just come in here um, all willy nilly because there's actually something that us hackers can do. We can put a little device on the end of your switch and the end of certain um, wirings, and we cannot get information that way as well. Now, especially if let's say if someone has ARP spoofed. Okay, now you're seeing in here every you know the password. This is the running configuration. Now, if someone has ARP spoofed your uh, system, they can get right into the switch. You want to make sure that the SSH lines are secure. You want to make sure that the configuration is secure. And you want to also make sure that those lines and the inter and the uh, interfaces are also secure as well. All right, everybody. This has been Glenn's Tech World here. Thank you again for watching. Um, be safe out there, everybody, and hack the planet.